Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm just Harold. You ever been out swearing over her two people having crazy conversations? Well, we are those people. We've been having these conversations since college. Yep, it's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast, Love is Blind, Season 6, Episode 11 Recap. Be sure to like, subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Um, I'd like to leave a review. Go for it. And say, great job on that crawfish um, boil yesterday, man. I, you know, so here's the thing. I hit the road early yesterday so I can help out, right? All right, let me help, let me help my brother out. Hey, what can I do? Nothing. Hey, what can I do to help? Nothing. <laughs> I'm a planner. I've got this all planned out. Down to the minute. I know when people are gonna arrive. I got this. <laughs> all right, well, I'll sit around and do some work then. Uh, at least I got, at least I got there early. I missed all the traffic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got there early. There was no traffic, but yes, I am a planner. So I had everything set up down to the minute of what I was going to do when, mm -hmm. so you didn't really have to do anything. You did help me a little bit with sleeping out the garage. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, I was, I had a real organized plan and everything went better than I expected. We probably had what a little over 40 people, mm -hmm. um, yesterday, all the crawfish was gone all the shrimp, all the crab, all the lobster was gone. So mm -hmm. no leftovers. King cake was Hold gone. Hold up. Did you get any of the lobster? I did. Okay. I did. Because I, I know I know you you had a lot of crawfish. You had 30 pounds of crawfish, right? Yep. Another like, crawfish. Another an, another almost almost the same amount of, of shrimp, but you didn't have 30 pounds of lobster. So I just want to make sure you got some cuz I know yeah. that went I know that went fast. Yeah, last year I didn't get any of the lobster tails. This year I bought ten lobster tails, and so yes, I got one. Mm -hmm. uh, but flawless execution. The hard part, I'll be honest, this is the hard part because you know how neat I am. Mm -hmm. It's just watching everybody and just like seeing little stuff <laughs> on the floor and whatever. I'm just like, ugh. Except the footprints. I, you didn't I, care about the footprints. Well, the footprints I couldn't do anything about. <laughs> I couldn't do anything about the footprints. But just watching all the little stuff and then end of the night you know you and girlfriend helped me with cleaning up and all that that was great uh -huh. but this morning when i got up and i saw those footprints i went old school <laughs> i got a bucket got some fabuloso and a towel and literally hand mopped all the floors downstairs i, I, I want y'all to understand how terrell is okay because his girlfriend's helping him hey when you talk about and i said this to i said this to her um, when i saw her, like you you're still putting up with this guy because <laughs> And this is why, because at the end of the night, she's helping, she's vacuuming up, making sure to get all the grass, because people are coming from the backyard through the living room and all that. And he's like, hey, uh, you missed a spot. Oh, no, over here. Hey, did, did you, there's a blade of grass over here. <laughs> I was like, yo, are you serious? <laughs> you know, I had to vacuum twice today because I kept finding little grass everywhere. You know, so... But it was, it was fun. I'm glad that y'all had a good time. I'm, it seemed like everybody had a good time. I have a ton of alcohol left, mm -hmm. uh, so I don't have to stock my bar for a while. But Wait, you finished the bottle that that, uh, that I bought that I brought for us, so you know at least that that one's gone. I did. I did polish <laughs> off the four roses, so so that was good. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean it, it was great. But yeah, that was the only downside. Is just. I saw someone like drop a potato on the floor. I wanted to yell like across the room, hey, can you pick that? <laughs> I was like, just let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> oh my God. It's, it, it's funny because you know, you have all these people still walking through the floor. Uh, so I knew you were gonna, I knew you were gonna mop that about three, four times. So by hand, you know, I'm old not school surprised. towel, got down there and just kind of scrubbed it all out. So hit the baseboards and everything. So I feel good about it. Yes, I am a little OCD. But <laughs> I don't know if, if my cleanliness, as Laura would say, it's a giving serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, um, so Black Tornado says, um, not fabuloso, use Pine Saw, more cleaning power. <laughs> ah, I'm a fabuloso guy. I, so, okay, I just, that's I like the fabuloso. thing, because I noticed more, Pine Saw is old school, right? Pine saw, yeah. Mr. Clean, that's what our parents use. I noticed a lot, my wife loves uh, Fabuloso. 
Um, you love Fabuloso. I noticed more and more people using Fabuloso. Yeah, I'm a fabulous, and I like the smell of it. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Um, Terrell, a.k.a. Jeremy. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, Maybe. let's see. Hey, High Vibe said Fabuloso is great. And uh, what's it? Mr. Lynn, do you know that? I don't know that one. Mm -mm. I don't know about Mr. Lynn. Mm -hmm. And Fab, um, High Vibe, yes, I do have cleaners that come every other Thursday. So they came this past Thursday. Everyone showed up on Saturday. Thus, I had to get down and dirty because I can't just let it sit, look like that for two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night seeing all those footprints and tracks on the floor. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, he did it before they showed up. Oh, I see footprints. I can't let them walk in and see footprints. Like, Jesus. <laughs> right. You can't they just let they, them walk in and bring their see own. the floor look bad. It's like, okay, if it gets bad when people are there, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Just can't walk in the house and see that. You'll be like, hey, I thought this house was clean. It is. <laughs> um, Rami says, vinegar and bacon soda. You ever tried that? No. Maybe for the baseboards, but yeah, I don't know. Um, Purple Fabuloso, though. And uh, Jocelyn says, hey, never heard of Fabulosa, but I'm Canadian. Hey, look into it. It's some good stuff. And okay, Nikki B asked this question before we get into this episode. Do all black folks wash dishes with dish liquid and bleach? Uh, I can't speak for all black folks. <laughs> but <laughs> I can say that for me, no, I've always just used dishwashing liquid. Actually, mm -hmm. until I bought my house, I rarely used a dishwasher. I'd always mm -hmm. wash everything by hand. Yeah. And so now that I moved into this house, actually, I use the dishwasher more often. Now, do I wash the stuff before I put it in the dishwasher? Mm -hmm. Of course. Right. Of course. Yeah, me too. I'm. I'm <laughs> my, it, I think it drove my wife crazy first because I'm. I wash all the dishes. To me, the dishwasher. Um, that's where I dry my stuff. <laughs> like I wash them by hand. I don't put bleach. I don't put bleach in my stuff. I don't do that at all. Um, because <laughs> I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't need, I don't need bleach in it. I bleach the sink <laughs> when I'm done, but that's about, it. I, I definitely bleach the, um, the, the, uh, garbage disposal. But yeah, as far as just bleach with the dishes now, nah, I wash those by hand and make sure I keep my dishwashing liquid and then I put it in the dishwasher. I may turn it on, but it's just really to rinse it off and let it dry. So see, I put all. Fabuloso in the garbage disposal to kind of run that. Mm -hmm. Tell you, Fabuloso that's is the shit. Well, that, <laughs> it's amazing. Cause, cause I juice, I use the lemon peel. I'll throw them in there. Whew. That and ice cubes. I say ice cubes are really good to throw down the, the garbage disposal, break up all that other crap that's in there. So. <laughs> Who knew you were coming here today to get house cleaning tips? <laughs> from, from, from us. From us. <laughs> Welcome to Regular Guys Random Cleanings. <laughs> Shout out to Robin. Thank you for the uh, super chat and the donation. Says, hi, new member here. You guys are the best. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, you know, we do want to, uh, we're probably, we've talked about this doing, whether to do our memberships as well. So we, we're, we're working on that as well. Um, and, you know, we just got to come up with some badges and stuff like that. Um, and make that so we can have that rolling um, because we definitely appreciate all of you. And while you're here, do us a favor, please hit that like button. Um, and if you're not subscribed, then go ahead, hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell for notifications. Let's see, because we've got episode 11 of Love is Blind to do today. Tomorrow we've mm -hmm. got Ready to Love to do. And you know what? We really should... Um, we're thinking that we should talk to one of the other guys from Ready to Love as well, too. So we're going to work on that as well, too. See if we can't do another interview before we get to the um, finale. Um, and also go check them out. But this episode, we pick up where it left off the last time. And that's at the lake party where um, Clay and Johnny, you know, the opposites attract um, bromance. Where they say, you know, Clay's like, come on with your uh, Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> outfit. I'm like, you know what? I can see it. <laughs> Tony Soprano right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they're having their little moment. And then what made me laugh at the very beginning of this is all the guys saying Matthew looked like Clark Kent. Yeah. And, and AD's like, what? Clark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what they forgot to say <laughs> was Patriot Clark Kent. Clark Kent. <laughs> I think more like Bizarro Clark Kent. <laughs> He's Clark Kent from the multiverse. Yeah. 
But yeah, she did. She and I wonder if that's just an edit to make it look that way, or did she really just like, oh my, mm, maybe I chose wrong. But she's happy with her black love, so she's fine. Yeah, yeah. The editing in this is just terrible, but it's whatever. Then Alejandro um, almost forgot Alejandro. Alejandra. Alejandra. Uh, Dra. Dra. Yeah. My uh, sorry. My t- my computer decided to want to put an O instead of an A there. Um, and Sarah and they show up. And really don't remember Alejandro much from the from the pods because you know they just focus on the ones that they choose to go on these relationships with. Um, well, they show up, and Laura can't believe that Sarah Ann showed up. Is she right in feeling this way? Uh, no, she's not right in feeling this way because she had to have known they're going to bring her on the show mm-hmm. and and figure out ways to keep bringing in the drama and all that because that's just what the reality show is. Mm-hmm. But what made me laugh is Sarah Ann walks in with just straight confidence. Mm-hmm. Hey ladies, how are you? She probably would have hugged Laura and be like, girl, you look amazing and just been complimentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, she wasn't intimidated at all. Maybe she didn't realize what she was walking into. Oh, uh, she knew what she was walking into. I, 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 <laughs> there's no doubt she knew what she was walking into, but she's got this kind of confidence, I think, um, even still. And her and Laura, and here's the interesting thing, because Laura, when they remember when she was on the date with with uh, Jeremy first in the pods, she came in and told Laura, "It's you," mm-hmm. and she kind of just and I thought that was the very mature way to handle it, and they did that. I thought it was cool, so it's not like they never spoke; they handle it well. But she did kind of, and I said this then, she did kind of predict what was going to happen. Oh, I'll have my moment. <laughs> well. she, so Laura shouldn't have been surprised that it happened. Or that it even, um, that she showed up. Because, yeah, like you said, it is something that you knew the producers were going to do. And somebody asked this real quick. Um, Phil Sorrell says, why wasn't, why, and you guess, why weren't Brittany and Kenneth there? That church. <laughs> of that, the black church. Yeah. <laughs> we know Brittany is good. All the time. All, and all the time. God is good. <laughs> you know, that's what Brittany was. <laughs> <laughs> She's finding her replacement. <laughs> said, let me get me. Let me get me another one. <laughs> yeah, checking checking out that tenor in the choir with the braids. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Sarah S says Sarah Ann has all the audacity, and Happy Gardener says um, Sarah Ann had that right wing Fox News white woman confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, she walked in there just. All she needed was a MAGA hat. Like, but she just had the confidence that she needed to walk in that group. And you, when you think about Sarah and saying that she was going to have her moment, uh-huh. you could say that she created her moment because she sent the DM to mm-hmm. Jeremy, right? So mm-hmm. maybe she's created her moment. So I can see why people would say that she's wrong for all this because mm-hmm. she reached out to this dude who she knows is engaged mm-hmm. who didn't pick her. But, you know after she has some more conversation about it, maybe we might think differently. It might, yeah. Black Tornado says she came. She just came to collect her man. <laughs> Michelle GM says, why wouldn't Sarah Ann show up? She's an idiot for thinking people would accept her after what she did. We'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute because uh, we got some things to say about that. Um, ST Jones says, Brittany and Kenneth were never even mentioned at this party. And if they were, they edited them completely the hell out. They never, you're yeah. right. I for, as we as we right before we jump on, and we say, All right, at the end of this, we'll do predictions. And I for, almost forgot about them because they have not been mentioned. When once um, Kenneth said, All right, give me a hug so we know there's no beef, deuces, I'm out. Call them other people that have been on the phone with this whole time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I, I still don't think that. Well, I probably believe Sarah Ann really thought there was nothing wrong with what she did. Right. And that she's just going into this like it's just, hey, I got invited to come to the to the lake house party or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Not realizing all the, the noise until she gets there. Right. Um, High Vibe says I wanted sociopath Matt to show up. Yes, that would have been amazing. Um, and uh, Anisha 618 says Brittany is at the National Black Baptist Convention. <laughs> <laughs> well those that were there uh 
we finally get to see this conversation because we we saw her thirsting over this man when he walked in, but Chelsea finally gets to talk to her other man, Trevor. And right. um, what you he comes up and asks, oh oh, what what you think? Would you, you like the mullet? She's like, well, I only saw one picture of me. He's like, mm, I looked you up immediately, and then he threw her government all out there, Chelsea Blackwell. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently. You know, he cried his eyes out after mm -hmm. after she dumped him. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is us ignoring all the things we're, we're hearing through social media about Trevor. So just mm -hmm. focusing on what we saw in the show. So apparently he cried his eyes out. Um, and their whole conversation, I was wondering where it was going to go. In other words, is Chelsea going to slip up and mm -hmm. say something that if Jimmy would have said to Jessica, she'd be upset and she didn't disappoint. She still said Trevor was her number one. Yeah. And um, he was her number one until Jimmy said that he loved her. So she was all in on Trevor, apparently. But when Jimmy told her, I loved you, that's when she was on the Jimmy train. Yeah. And that sounds weird, didn't it? That's when she got on the Jimmy train. <laughs> How many Jimmys were there? And when they came out, I was train. like, oops, <laughs> that sounded bad. But you get what I'm saying, that she, she was all on Jimmy because Jimmy proposed first. And Trevor even asked again. So if I'd have asked you first, would it have changed anything? And she's like, nope. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have. Yeah. I think it's because she knew she was stealing somebody from someone way hotter that's, than her. That's the part. And it really was a contest for her in that space, right? Because I think that's what everybody was thinking. Because her and Trevor would have been a good match. And we said that in there um, without even knowing what her type was. Um, and, and Trevor then says, you know, that even if he did something terrible, he couldn't see Chelsea yelling at him. And we all collectively rolled our eyes and went, you haven't seen what we've seen. And then mm -hmm. she told him. Yeah, then she told him. And here's what proves our, our, our commentary about that one night. It's that night mm -hmm. when she was yelling at Jimmy and because mm -hmm. he went out to that party for an hour and a half, she said she was drunk on martinis. Mm -hmm. So she was hammered when she got into that big fight with Jimmy. Uh, but I'm like, why would you tell that to mm -hmm. Trevor? You can just say, hey, you know, we're learning each other, da, 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 but why get that specific, although I guess he's going to see it eventually, so you might yeah. as well. Um, Black Tornado says Trevor did the best acting of everyone. Uh, <laughs> because, and people are saying that because, of course, you know, all the stuff that's come out with him, but he's really playing this role right now, right? And, and I think he did a lot of flirting and playful uh, banter with Chelsea in this entire thing, uh, even in the whole world. Uh, Oh, uh, even when uh, Jimmy shows up and he's still, oh, well, I'm here talking to your woman. <laughs> well, I was laughing just how much Trevor kept saying how attractive she is. Mm -hmm. like, he just kept saying it, mm -hmm. which, you know, Chelsea was just eating that eating up. And it up. When, when Jimmy came up and, you know, him and uh, Trevor kind of hugged it out. I mm -hmm. bet that was like one of Chelsea's best wet dreams right there. She was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment. The two men in my life together. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But Trevor, he does he will realize how much of a bullet he dodged mm -hmm. um, once he watches this back. Um, Jimmy gets a little testy though here. You know, he has no problem with Chelsea talking to Trevor, at least that he says. But then when she says and maybe this shows that he does have a problem with her talking to trevor and he was just playing it cool because even trevor was like yo i like jimmy so i'm glad i'm happy for y'all right and rightfully so um but when chelsea says that amy and johnny oh they're the best couple here jimmy gets real testy i mean serious like all of a sudden he turned it's like they switch roles and we're like yo what the hell happened jimmy he has to because he has to keep reassuring her like no we're the best couple Mm -hmm. Everything is great about us. Mm -hmm. You are amazing. He has to keep giving those confirmations mm -hmm. to Chelsea. So he was probably acting because everybody would agree that Amy and Johnny so far are the best yes. couple mm -hmm. out of all of them. A lot less drama. But of course, Jimmy can't agree with that because if he did, then Chelsea would be like, wait a minute, what about us? <laughs> now I'm uncomfy. <laughs> 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 Yeah, Michelle says Trevor was glad he didn't get with her after hearing about the argument. He he still kept making it seem like he um like like he wanted her still though, didn't he? I think he just wants to win. I don't think he really wants her. He just wanted to be the one chosen, which mm -hmm. is why he signed up for Perfect Match. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> M. Smith uh, says Chelsea dodged a bullet as well with Trevor. Um, I mean, this is, is screen time is screen time is screen time, right? So, right, possibly she dodged a bullet, but we, I think we can all agree Trevor is the winner of the bullet dodging contest. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the question: uh, Kristen asks this. I didn't notice this, and maybe you did. Uh, was that mayo on Jimmy's hot dog? I didn't notice that. Okay, I didn't notice it either. But if so, that was nasty. You don't if like that, mayo? N- n- no, not necessarily, and especially not on a hot dog. But um, I also don't like mustard on my hot dog either, so, you know. What do you put on your hot dog? Ketchup. Like a five-year-old? Really? That's how you eat a hot dog? Like a three-year-old, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like mustard. Look, I didn't realize people put mustard in, in mac and cheese till I got to Charleston. And I, was like, I remember we ordered it from the soul food place. I forget the exact place. but um, And I was like, man, this mac and cheese looks really yellow. And I took a bite of it. I'm like, something's off. I took another bite. And I'm like, is that mustard in this? They're like, yeah, it probably is. I'm like, who the hell puts mustard in mac and cheese? Just like who the mm-hmm. hell puts mayo on a hot dog? Yeah, I mean, I don't do mayo on a hot dog, but I get it. But mm-hmm. I'm more of a mustard person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, uh. Breezy Film says, I put barbecue sauce on mine. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. Hot sauce, too. Yeah. Ugh. Space Ace um, <laughs> says, yep, must, mustard and onions and chili on the hot dogs. Ugh. Yeah. Well, yeah, possible. Hey, but Marjan said that mayo oh, and ketchup. Really? Yeah, mayo and ketchup on a hot dog. My wife likes mayo. I don't, I, I don't know why, but yeah. If, if, I, if I get Chick-fil-A and don't get mayo, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> And see, happy gardener. See, look, and he's a four as well. Um, so the husband eats his hot dogs with ketchup as well. See, and he's he's a nuke. He's a number four. Four club. So it's a Kappa thing, I guess. <laughs> Got it. It's a four club there. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, next up, um, we wanted to see this showdown. Jeremy, uh, well, Laura and Jeremy. And Jeremy's trying to explain himself to Laura. And that goes about as well as we expected it, right? Right, her whole body language, just standing there, you, everything about her said, we are done. <laughs> and so I think if Jeremy could have got out of having that one-on-one conversation with her, mm-hmm. he probably would have, but of course, producers probably egged that on. Um, and, you know, Jeremy said it, it sucked to hear that his name had changed from fiance to just Jeremy. <laughs> what would you think was going to happen, brother? Yeah, you stayed out all night. You expect her to be like, I slept on it. We're cool. I'm coming back over. <laughs> you know, the thing is, I like how he's like, well, you know, I came in with the best intentions and that was all lo- like, it's just like, he goes, <clears throat> how can I piss her off more? Let me see. No, if I yell at her, no. Hey, and Laura, you know, I came with the best intentions. Mission accomplished. Because <laughs> she went off. I, I mean, <laughs> Why would he even utter those words out of his mouth after staying out till 5 a.m. with mm-hmm. with her rival from the pods? And you're going to be like, you know, I came with this whole process with the best of intentions. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't matter. That's like Clay saying, I really came into this process hoping I wouldn't cheat. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Yeah. Me too. laughs> so she calls him a con artist mm-hmm. and he said that he had tried to apologize and she said three days later so that was new information for me right that he waited three days so after that night with sarah to reach out and apologize mm-hmm. you know it's here's the thing though was he really trying to apologize or is he just trying to save face i don't think he cared at that point yeah he doesn't come across like someone that's would really care like once he decided what he's doing in his world yeah he's gonna let the chips fall where they may he knew he was gonna get caught oh yeah why would you send your location knowing Mm -hmm. you're going to get caught so i just think this was his way of instead of having an adult conversation say hey look you're cool this is not working out he figured you know let's blow some shit up yeah (laughs) but you know what he did and part of it's because they slept together so he's like oh well she's in it i gotta find a way to make her leave um M. Smith says she would have deleted his name altogether as opposed to just changing his name back to his actual name, right? Well, here's the interesting thing. Laura now goes, look, I'm going to come. I'm going to get all my stuff. And Jeremy's like, yeah, I already packed it all up. It's cool. I'll be ready for you. (laughs) (laughs) And you could tell she she didn't know how to take that. She's like, so 
you've already gone through all my things. He's mm -hmm. just like, yeah, your shit's done. It's in the garage. And you can see why. And I think that was on purpose. And, and the two things, reasons why I think she's uh, upset there. One, because he went through her things. Because like Ravine says, Jeremy packing her bags already was weird. Don't touch my stuff. I get that feeling. Yeah, don't touch my stuff. But... At the same time, the other thing is what she says, which is, wait, so you already made up your mind. You already knew. So you having this conversation here is, is bullshit. Pretty much is what she was saying. Pretty much. Pointless mm -hmm. for him to even sit and have the conversation if he already packed up her stuff mm -hmm. and ready to go. I think if they didn't live together and he packed mm -hmm. up her stuff and it was his, it was his place, mm -hmm. I see nothing wrong with that. I right. do agree, though, when you're on the show's shared space that y'all are supposed to be in for this experiment. Mm -hmm. And you go through and pack up all her stuff. That's a bit foul. But one thing we could probably say is Jeremy probably packed really well. Yeah. And it's really neat. Mm -hmm. And it's all organized. Boss exactly. is labeled. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's At least that. She'll, she'll know where everything is. Now, J. Noel <laughs> has another part. It says, Laura treated this man like dirt and got mad when he did the same. That is a great point. Because it's not like she was extreme. She wasn't this nice person. Right. So, I mean... Now, doesn't justify his, his actions. What are we taught as kids? Two wrongs don't make a right. Show sure feels good, though. And he didn't do the same. <laughs> he didn't do the same. He kicked it up a notch. Like, a lot, actually. Not a notch. He kicked it up a lot. Because, yeah, she might not have been the nicest person to him, but she didn't go out till 5 o'clock in the morning with some dude claiming to sit in the parking lot talking, you know, after the bars close at 2 for an extra three, three and a half hours. No. Well, well, she did do like um, Kristen said, you know, her favorite line. She did tell him to kick rocks and open toe shoes on. <laughs> she said that a couple times. Like she wanted to make sure the producers did not leave that out. Yeah, I'm surprised there's not going to be merch, some t-shirts. It <laughs> like, probably is. It probably with, already with is. With an open-toed foot, <laughs> open-toed <laughs> shoe with a foot sticking out and kicking a rock. <laughs> with, if you know, you know, <laughs> under it. <laughs> Trini, Trini says, Laura hated everything about him. He did that on purpose. Yeah, he did. He he, I really think he did. I think mm -hmm. that instead of just, hey, I'm not feeling this, you're kind of rude to me, he just mm -hmm. blew it up, which probably, to your point, is if they've slept together, which I think mm -hmm. they, Laura said they, they did. did. Yeah. If they slept together, yeah, it's going to be awkward now. But yeah, he intentionally blew this up. Yeah. Um, Sarah says Jeremy was just trying to one-up her with the insults. Um, so, um, in which, yeah, that set her over the edge, as, as well as um, when he's like, well, look, Let's just enjoy, I just want to enjoy um, <clears throat> the rest of this outing here at the lake. So let's just go and, and, you know, have a good time. She's like, really? You just ended your engagement. He's like, yeah, but I didn't give a shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> and neither do you, so what are you worried about? <laughs> <laughs> Not his exact words, but I wanted to translate for it. Yeah. That was, you just in our engagement. Is that really a big deal to you? Seriously? <laughs> Look at the jet skis. Look at all this stuff out here we can do. There's food. There's so much fun we could have with our friends. Why do mm -hmm. we got to keep talking about this? <laughs> now, Amanda says, let's all be honest. Jeremy just wanted to have sexual relations with these women. I don't know how people ain't picking up on that. I'm, I mean... Every guy on the shows want to have sexual relations with the women on the show. I mean, that's, that's how it is. You know? Even Johnny does. He's yeah, just, Johnny wants to. He's, he's just afraid. skirt. <laughs> he's just he's just skirt. <laughs> Johnny's gonna crush up uh, birth control pills and put them in, put them in the pool. <laughs> Here, baby, I made you a protein shake. <laughs> yes. And he's going to be like, you know what? I don't care about this. If, if we get pregnant, we get pregnant. <laughs> so I guess, would that be called like a bizarro Bill Cosby move? You know, you just <laughs> fill over birth control instead of stuff to make him forget. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, Johnny, yeah, Johnny wants to. And I, I personally believe they have already. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they've, they're they going to wait till they're they're married, but so be it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy's something else. You know, I just can't, I, I've always said I can't figure this guy out, but he is just something else. But watching how this whole thing unfolded mm -hmm. um, just makes him look really bad. Space Ace says, uh, Jeremy Bean dipped out of his engagement. <laughs> 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 boop, boop. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going jet skis, holla. Doop, doop. Out. <laughs> 
Uh, Sly, go, go, go into the blog, said, uh, apparently Jeremy's already an expert in ending engagements. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if anybody wants to f- go to that webinar, how to yeah. really blow up a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, next thing we get to see is this conversation between AD and Sarah Ann. And my first question is, why does AD have so much animosity for Sarah Ann? And is it because Clay is prepping her for when he's going to cheat on her? <laughs> I don't know why AD was so invested mm-hmm. in this conversation. It'd be one thing if her and Laura were like besties and maybe they were closer than what we saw, you mm-hmm. know, on film. But I just thought like, why are you really digging deep into this? And kudos to Sarah Ann for, as you say, stood 10 toes down in her decision yeah. to send him a DM mm-hmm. and the whole thing. Like, I really don't see anything wrong with what I did. <laughs> yeah. but- and the thing about it, she's like, well, no, I mean, I didn't say what I wanted to hear. And this is what it is. And she's like, I felt he left the door open anyway, right? But here's the thing that really irked me in this case, right? And yes, okay, we're not standing with AD 100%, so we're probably putting her down. Oh, my God. Stay out the comments. <laughs> I'll bring it on. I don't care. Either way. <laughs> but here's the point. Because AD, in this case, was sticking her nose, her foot, her toe in everything of their business like it was her her thing. And and to the point when she's like, well, that's just your opinion. I think you're crazy uh, for doing that. The, the way you're thinking that, that's crazy. And Sarah Ann says, well, that's your opinion. She goes, well, I haven't given my opinion yet. You just did. Yeah. Everything you you're did. saying and your whole body language to me right now is telling me you don't agree with, with what I did. And so <sighs> what Sarah's mind is that she sent that text when they got out of the pods. That means they were still away on their trip. Mm-hmm. Um, and just said, hey, you know, if it doesn't work out, uh, I'm I'm here. Still like to get to know you. Yeah. Uh, now, Jeremy should have just either deleted that, mm-hmm. blocked her on social, mm-hmm. and not even showed Laura that. So, again, he was like, ooh, this can help me blow this up later. Yes, exactly. <laughs> save this. Yeah. But, and then, but, knew, but, but Sarah, he oh, yeah, he did us, but... What I thought was interesting is that Sarah is confirming that nothing happened. They were, Mm -hmm. she was out drinking with friends. Jeremy happened to be there. This is her first time getting a chance to meet him in person. Mm -hmm. They got to talking and said that he did give her a ride home, didn't go into her apartment. She felt she did not cross the line because AD was fishing for that. Like, well, how did that conversation end? Well, what happened there? Trying to find out, did you at least kiss some goodbye or something? I think AD was just being extra messy. Well, they also, she did kind of ask her another question after that. And whether it was um, editing or not, it made it seem like she's like, well, um, yeah, right. he just dropped me off. So either way it was. But Happy Gardner says, I think 80 is the person the producers identified as the person to speak to people. You know, Kenneth. Hey, you know, she's going to be raising your black kids, right? Um, and now Sarah Ann, like, you know, you was. <laughs> now, <laughs> when, when Sarah Ann tries to call out, AD for, you know, trying to get all of this business and being messy. Um, like Amanda says, did you peep um, AD saying, hey, I don't care. You ain't effing my man. And how Sarah Ann did not correct her. I was expecting Sarah Ann to say, I'll have my moment. <laughs> <laughs> I expected her to go, yeah, but I know who is. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now that would have stopped. Here's the thing about this, and th- this is where I feel like AD was so wrong in this in this entire conversation, because then she just gets up and leaves in the middle of the conversation, like she's mad, like as if she's Laura, like Laura possessed her body and was like, I can't anymore, and gets up and walks away. To me, it just seems extra messy in this case, extra messy when you have n- nothing that we have seen, and maybe I missed it. Maybe there's something I missed as to how close her and Laura are. Cause yeah, she's riding with Laura, but damn, this hard. She did. She she went a little too hard in that. But I was expecting that Laura and Sarah Ann were going to have a conversation. Mm-hmm. At least I was hoping that that was going to come, mm-hmm. but to no avail. By the way, um, so the women are not believing Sarah. Uh, M Smith says uh, Sarah Ann is a damn lie. Um, Jay Noel says, honestly, no one is worth defending at this point. Um, Amanda says, Sarah Ann is lying. <laughs> and Sarah says, Sarah Kermit says, Sarah Ann did not answer the question. I can't say she's lying. All I know is she's saying nothing happened. Jeremy said nothing happened. 
it's 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 not easily believable to mm-hmm. a lot of us because I know if I was in their situation, mm-hmm. uh, um, well, I wouldn't have picked Laura. So yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> I wouldn't be in that situation. <laughs> Asia says uh, AD wanted Sarah to confirm that Jeremy gave her the green light to do that. Um, well, he did when he hit the double tap. At least that's what everybody said, right? So therefore, what do you need to confirm? You already said that. Um, <laughs> K Wu Ten says they were they was in the car necking. Necking. <laughs> I still, I still don't get the big deal, the double tap. So people on IG, you know, some people that follow our show will sometimes send me a message or mm-hmm. share me a meme of that they think I would think it's funny. Mm-hmm. And I just double tap it. Right. I'm not like trying to open the door right. for every person that sends me a message. So maybe Jeremy was just doing the same thing. I'm just, oh, I'm at a red light. Oh, hilarious. Double tap. So if it. somebody sent you a message, right, um, and said, well, look, if you and your girlfriend don't work out, <laughs> and you double tap it. Is it the same thing as a funny yeah, meme? Because I'm going to double tap it, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to show my girlfriend, hey, babe, check this out. <laughs> Somebody who follows the pod, I don't know who it is. This is what they said. <laughs> you want to take a screenshot and hold it just in case and show your friends? Yeah, that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> Ray Bean says, um, and speaking about 80, says she would do the same for her friends. I don't like women that mess with married men. Yes. But are her and Laura really friends? That's the point I'm making. It, it's it's not like they were riding hard together throughout this pod process. We have not even seen them have really good conversations. So um, I, that part, I that's why I didn't really get that, right? That's the problem I have. I didn't see, and maybe we just missed that. Now, um, Sarah Kermit also says AD was right on calling her out. Sarah Ann was the messy one. I get it. That she was messy, but yeah. But I feel like that's Laura's job to call. Her out. She wasn't messy to AD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Sly Ace says Jeremy was double tapping. All right. <laughs> <laughs> K Wu Ten says double tap is equal to a wink, wink. Is it or is it just an yes. acknowledgement? Um, see, that's why sometimes I, I change that double tap and go, oh, hey, hold up there. Let me just change that emoji and make it, you know, the the fi- the, the, the flex as opposed to the heart because people can read those things um, wrong. And Shoshana says, look, hey, they're not married yet. Well, see, you, they are engaged. If, but if you do the flex, now you're trying to show some girl how strong you are on Instagram, <laughs> and so now you're opening up the door, Yanni. That's all that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> Ravy says AD is the designated village idiot. <laughs> Why would Damn. you say that? Damn. <laughs> Now, hold up. I like Lucy B's comment here, which says <laughs> Laura wasn't going to call her out though, because Laura is the type that talks a lot of trash. Mm-hmm but doesn't say to people's face. Right. Except Jeremy's. But Mm -hmm. she's talked about some of the ladies, but seeing her confront them, I figured that wouldn't happen. So uh, you're right. Laura wasn't going to call her out, say anything about that. And CXM says, I think AD was just being nosy, which is part, I think. And and it's the fact that, you know, um, as as it was being pointed out earlier, Clay keeps rubbing, cheating in her face. So that's probably a trigger for her anyway, right? Um, by the way, just before we move on from this, Lucy B says, Necking takes me back to happy days. Hey. <laughs> Yo, you should try that. Hey, babe, you want to go in the other room and do a little necking? <laughs> just see what happens. Hey, Facia on, um, on Facebook says, uh, AD doesn't have to be besties with Laura to call her out. She's a woman. Um, and remember, Clay's talking about cheating. So that's, I can, I can understand that, I guess. I guess, I guess that's, what, again, it's a trigger for her, right? So that's probably exactly what it is. Yeah, but th- that's not the trigger for her to go after Sarah Ann. Right, yeah. But whatever, you know, she's gonna go after everybody that she hears about cheating because we're waiting for the day that Clay cheats on her. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we get, um, is this a new couple? Sarah Ann and Jeremy? Because Sarah Ann is upset about her, com- after a conversation with, um, with AD. And, um, you know, she's like, yo, I'm not, I'm, what'd, what'd she say? She should worry about her own damn relationship. She well, tells me she's got some tea. Sarah, you, you could have took that same advice before you got on Instagram sliding into DMs. <laughs> <laughs> could worry about your own single situation and stay up, Jeremy. She was. Laura. That's why she slid into DMs. Yeah. She was worried about it. So she went, let me go get my man. <laughs> <laughs> so 
this conversation was funny because Sarah's hot that, you know, these ladies are, are thinking negative things about her and that she was wrong and all that stuff. Mm. And, you know, they both agreed that Sarah's message was not bad. And Jeremy didn't think it was bad for her to assent it. And he said it didn't influence his relationship with, her, with Laura and right. his decision to leave Laura. Now, what she did say and when she was talking to AD is that Jeremy told her that he was mm. going to end it yeah. with Laura that was after the three hours. So I'm like, hmm, so it didn't influence you, but you hung out for three hours after the bar closed, mm -hmm. and then you decided to come home to show your ass. Well, you, you know what it was? It was confirmation. He knew he, knew he wanted to leave when they were in the Dominican Republic. When he was like, I'm going home. He was like, that was the moment he was like, yeah, I got the wrong one. This is, this is it. He was checked out since then. Now, granted, he's in the DR. The producers said, look, man, we're not flying you back. So you got to pay for that on your own. He's like, eh. and you got this contract you signed. So we need you to stick around for a little bit longer and finish some scenes. He's like, mm. we got some more liquor. Mm. You can get you some. Okay. I'll stick around for a little bit. <laughs> And that's how Jeremy stuck around in the DR. But he was done. He, he was already done. So him meeting up, that's why the plotting of all this relationship thing, breaking up went, right? And that's why when he met with Sarah Ann and he could confidently tell her, oh no, this is over. I've already packed her stuff in my mind. She just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, they both, well, Jeremy, Jeremy agrees and tells her that if you don't need these ladies, because she said, I don't need to be friends with any of these people and all that. His point is, why let them get to you? Why are you so mad? Which is what I was saying. You came in with this confidence, mm -hmm. you know, of a runway model, knowing that you've got, probably got some people there who are pissed off at you. Mm -hmm. And then you don't care. You don't need them. Then why does it bother you that they're not happy with you? Yo, Happy Gardener says, see, Sarah Ann is messy. And then here comes fragility as she throws out the WWTs. Um, were you surprised to see those? Never. I mean, it's reality TV. You got to cry. If you want screen time, <laughs> if you want screen time, you got to draw up some tears. I'm surprised she just pull out some visine out of her pocket. Like, what do you mean? I just don't understand. I'm not a bad person. <laughs> but, you know, here's the thing. And you, we applauded um, King Harris for standing on business. So do we applaud Sarah Ann for like, look, I'm going to justify me sending these messages and I don't regret it. Do we now, you know, applaud her for standing on business too? It depends. <laughs> Does it work for her or not? Mm -hmm. I mean, if that winds up being five years from now, Jeremy and Sarah Ann still together, mm -hmm. have their first kid, and everything is going great, we can be like, oh, well, you know. He'll be born on January 6th. It worked out. <laughs> but I think it all depends on what happens, right? How, how many people, how many ladies have dated a married man mm -hmm. and that, the exception is that one married man realized he loves her, breaks up with his wife, marries her. That girl's going to say it was worth it right, to go through all that because mm -hmm. now we're together, we're happy, and so on and so forth. If he never chooses you and stays with his wife and keeps hurting your feelings, well, then you're going to be like, you know, should have done that. Well, <laughs> to be fair, Jeremy's not married. Um, Trisha Ann says, did you tell see if you noticed this? Loved how she broke the fourth wall. I don't care. <laughs> Did you see that when she looked at the camera? I, I saw a couple of people say that earlier too. <laughs> yeah, she knew what she was doing. I think mm -hmm. Sarah Ann knew very well what she was doing coming out there. And I think she was prepared for it. I think her crying and all that was really fake. Um, Mrs. Ward says, Jeremy's a horrible mofo. He showed Laura how he couldn't care any less for her. He stayed out all night, packed up her shiggity and jet ski with a jump off in front of her and the whole pod gang. Yo. Jeremy's solution, and I don't care what y'all say, Jeremy's solution for this moment and all the nonsense that was happening, and he, he had told Laura, let's go have a good time, and Laura's like, da, 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 da. he's like, okay, Sarah Ann, let's go have a, let's go jet ski. They jump out of the jet skis, and we have never seen Jeremy this happy since the pods. Even in the DR, he wasn't this damn happy. On, a, <laughs> in, on the beach, he wasn't this happy, but on a lake? That's a commercial. Hey, <laughs> if I send you a meme of some jet skis, just know I'm done with whatever we're talking about <laughs> or, or whatever we're going back and forth with. Once you get the jet ski, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> uh, 
Black Tornado says they go try out for the U.S. Cheetahs Olympics jet ski team. <laughs> Laughing all the way. Yes, they they looked happy. You know what? I wanted a jet ski after watching them. <laughs> and I have fun on jet skis. I, I would never want to do it on a lake because there are no waves. But they look so damn happy. They did. I mean, they, they actually were like, looked happy about the whole deal. I feel like Jeremy also did that as if to say, let's really piss these people off. Yes. You know, I'm on this mission to really crush Laura's feelings. <laughs> you and me get on a jet ski together and you take off like those pants you have on. Yeah. And just wear that bikini. Mm-hmm. It's going to be perfect. <laughs> we should go do it. <laughs> hey, Sarah S says, Jeremy was happy because it was the first time that day that no woman was yelling at or crying to him. <laughs> yeah, because he couldn't have, to, he was on a jet ski. He didn't have to talk to anyone. <laughs> And so at this point, we see an emotional moment from Laura, which you yeah. don't see a lot of. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's just talking about how she feels about the whole deal and says, I will never see or talk to Jeremy again. So I'm thinking to myself, OK, Laura, so are you not going to the reunion? <laughs> because <Right. laughs> if you're there and he's there, there's going to be a conversation. Yeah, it might be a little, and there's going to be some yelling because, you know, Laura's going to yell at him anyway. High Vibe says Sarah and Jeremy riding those jet skis was thrown in on Laura's face. Um, well, I mean, or he did tell her, let's have a good time. And Amanda says, look, if a jet ski company ain't making a commercial out of those two in the jet skis, I've never seen people so happy in a jet ski. Exactly. That'd be a great slogan. I mean, who, who looks unhappy on a jet ski? Have you ever seen somebody unhappy <laughs> on a jet ski? I'm like, hey, if life's treating you bad, get on a jet ski. Are you going through a divorce? We have these amazing jet skis. You just had to pack up your significant other stuff so they can get the F out? Yeah. Get on a jet ski. Yeah. Get on a jet ski. So, that, I mean, jet ski companies could really do something with this if they wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> it really was. Um, somebody says, uh, Happy Gardner says, why didn't Clay sponsor the jet skis? He might have. He might have. Doesn't he have like jet skis in his little? So I was really he does. thinking that those were his. Uh-huh. And if he's smart, I'm gonna make some money off the right. show. Hey, yes, y'all can rent my jet skis mm-hmm. for this little late date. I'm down. Matter of fact, his Airbnb. It could have been his place, and he's just like right. you know. Um, now he's 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 put it out. You know, as seen on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's Smokey Jason. I was waiting for a wardrobe malfunction with Laura. Why? Why would you want that? <laughs> I think somebody wants to see something. <laughs> Apparently. I don't know. Apparently. <laughs> Yo, uh, SD Jones says, Chelsea upset with Jimmy and she's crying or yelling? Jet ski. <laughs> Oh, man. But, you know, everybody's giving Jeremy a hard time. Everybody's giving Sarah Ann a hard time. Um, Michelle says, so happy Jeremy got away from mean girl Laura. So not everybody is here trashing them. And again, the man looked happy. He did. Now, Mm -hmm. will it stick? No, probably not. And the thing is, does he really want to? Does he Mm -hmm. want it to? Because it's Jeremy. Jeremy's (laughs) like, today I feel like mustard on my hot dog. Tomorrow... (laughs) He's going to stick for a little bit. Go back to that mayo that he had before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michelle, Michelle said Jeremy looked free. That's what I thought. <laughs> hey, see, here we go. More people, because there was a lot of hate for Jeremy and Sarah Ann, but here we're getting some support. Mario says Jeremy made the right choice. And, oh, but Sarah S, oh, here we go. There's no way Sarah Ann is less of a mean girl than Laura. They both have attitude for days. Yeah, they do. But maybe Jeremy needs somebody as maybe sneaking and conniving as Sarah Ann. Mm -hmm. But I think Sarah Ann is not going to talk to him the way Laura did. Mm -hmm. That would probably make him shut down. I don't know. Yeah, could be. So a little bit of both. Maybe that will help him stay with Sarah Ann. Uh, Black Tornado says, maybe they're the new Bliss and Zach. Now, remember, <clears throat> and I think people forget this because Bliss and Zach just had a baby, too. And yeah. remember, Bliss was second choice for Zach. He chose absolutely wrong. He chose miserably wrong. We yeah. felt so bad for Zach because he chose that wrong. And Bliss actually met him and said okay to being, and never felt second fiddle with him at the end of the day. I mean, hell. They're still going strong, right? Right, but Zach didn't sleep with the other girl mm-hmm. and then be like, ah, you know, 
I really should have been with Bliss. Like nothing happened. There was no connection mm -hmm. for them at all. And he chose badly. So I think that's a little bit different mm -hmm. than he gets engaged to Laura and, you know, they have their, you know, yada, yada, yada. And maybe that could be the reason why he also wanted out. Yeah. He was just like, ooh, for the rest of my life, this? This? This is, I got to do this with this I, person for the rest of my life? No, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been, that could have been the seal. But it can't, that shouldn't be the seal. Let's be, let's be honest. It shouldn't be. Should it be? Yeah. And yeah. All right. Uh, well, oh, Karen is pointing out too, but after he broke up with um, Irina, yeah. Uh, yeah, well. but he ended, but 100% he ended it, but I think it's different that he didn't sleep with Irina mm -hmm. and all that and then switch to Bliss. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, video footage for Bliss to realize nothing happened, there was no connection, and he ended it first mm -hmm. before he reached out to her. So I think their situation is a happy ending and it went really well. I just don't think we'll have the same with Jeremy and Sarah Ann, but... Let's see what happens by the reunion. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, um, I mean, everybody's saying this. So he did it after, um, you know, so. He did it right. Yeah, good point. That is a good point. That is a good point. Even though Moondance does say Laura equals Irina. Yeah, mean. <laughs> she was mean. I mean. We cannot deny Laura was mean. Laura's mean as hell. She is. She oh. is. And I think she, she likes it. <laughs> and maybe she's used to guys who just accept that and put up with it. Yo, J. Ro says, yes, please do not ever compare Sarah to Bliss. Yeah, I, I, I will not compare the two, but yeah. <laughs> like Kendra says, Laura's own family don't like her. <laughs> yeah, they say you treat her like a princess, she'll walk all over you. Yeah. And Jeremy's not the type to treat her like a princess, but also I think that's what bothered Laura too. Outside yeah. of the Sarah Ann deal, mm -hmm. Jeremy didn't kiss her ass like maybe every other guy right. would do. And mm -hmm. so she didn't like that. Exactly. Well, um, after this, we get to the wedding planning, right? And it's, I mean, let's be honest. After this whole, after the jet skis, that very happy moment, the rest of this episode went down the toilet. It, it, it was terrible after that, right? Um, we did get to see some wedding planning. So we see Chelsea and Jimmy going ice sculpting. Anything there? They went ice sculpting. <laughs> that was... So, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I'm taking my notes. And so I'm like, okay, wedding dress, tuxedo shopping. Wait, mm. nothing, right? Yeah. Oh, you look beautiful. You're, everyone's a princess. Mm. Everyone looks amazing in their wedding dresses. The only big thing is Chelsea, when she got married first, she spent $100 on eBay for her dress. So now mm. she's really going to do it big. Now she's going to spend 150 Yes, yeah, um, she's going to spend $150. Well, you know, <laughs> then we get to the... Uh, the um, the last dates because i mean before before that we see ad and clay they went to go kicks and froze to create their shoes for the altar kind of cute what they were doing but then we get to see them on their um last date and as clay is picking her up and putting her in the car and it's got the roses and yee, 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 that squeal lady does oh my god that would have been like all right i'm sorry keep, i'm saying keep no driving. now keep driving <laughs> just, just, roll the window. Up. just take off just go <laughs> here's twenty dollars take her wherever you want I can't deal with that little squealing, squeaky thing that she does when she gets excited. Ugh. Could you imagine the rest of your life? That's what you have to deal with? <laughs> no, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. What about um, Amy and Johnny? They were, um, well, prior to um, the wedding dress shop, and they were talking about wanting pictures of, Amy wants pictures of her grandparents at the wedding, and they talk about hyphenating their names, right? And... Johnny says, okay, yeah, we can do that. that I, I'm, I'm all for that. That would be disrespectful for me to say, no, you must take my name, but my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Them kids ain't hyphenating nothing. <laughs> I would agree with that. Yes. I would absolutely. agree with that. Hey, yeah. you don't have to take my last name, but mm -hmm. if, if there is a Terrell Jr., mm -hmm. his last name will be the same as mine. Right. And middle name be the same as mine. That. I need you to be okay with that. If I have a daughter, you kind of want to do something different with that. Mm. Okay. But if I have a son, mm -mm. you know, we actually played around with, um, when we have my daughter having exact same initials as me, we, we thought about that for a while too. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was cute. I'm sorry. I got, I, I, I blanked out. <laughs> I blanked out. I'm sorry. I just, 
I'm sorry. That's, such that's so cute. Tell me more about this. <laughs> Jet skis. <laughs> You're such an asshole. <laughs> That's funny as hell. <laughs> oh, you're such an asshole. Oh, oh my God. man. The smile you had on your face telling that story, I'm like, he's really there right now. <laughs> I was in that moment. Yes, I was. Damn. That's like how I pulled a Jeremy. How can I ruin this for him? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, damn. <laughs> hey, RB says I took my husband's name, but my kids have hyphenated names. <laughs> That's interesting, and you know, and and I get, I notice a lot more people having these hyphenated. We have this discussion at some point um, later on. Uh, interesting where people are doing names and and even um, or making their previous surname now a middle name and taking the last name. So interesting how people are doing because people have built their their name, especially as you get married later. You've already built a, a name with your name. Mm -hmm. As opposed to when you got married at 18 and you're just like, all right, well, only people in high school remember me by this name, so. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, K.O. says emotional overload, Terrell checked out. <laughs> no, he's just an asshole, that's all. <laughs> Jet skis, I'll send you the meme when we get off. <laughs> we'll get off the live. <laughs> well, Johnny starts talking about the vasectomy again, right? <laughs> this is stupid, man. And apparently he, he did some research and got even more nervous about the vasectomy. Well, when you read about it, just the things he was talking about, I was just like, mm -hmm. mm, I'm crossing my legs. I was like, ooh, that sounds, does not sound fun. But it's, it's an option for them. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like Amy is also leaning towards looking into birth control options for herself. So it's not mm -hmm. just... Johnny having to get a vasectomy. So maybe what a lot of people thought was going to be the thing that ruins this relationship, the fact that they just had open dialogue about it mm -hmm. and been open to how each other felt, not Johnny saying, no, you need to get on the pill or uh, whatever else, or she saying, I'm not doing that, period. You right. got to go do this. I think that's what marriage is, right? You kind of work yeah. through yeah. things and you come to a compromise and it sounds like they're doing that. They have had the best relationship we've seen all season. They talk through everything. They've had their disagreements and it's not been hostile. Mm -hmm. And they're still looking for that big disagreement. This is a big disagreement, but they're handling it very well. And even when you see them at their campfire date um, and you find out that Amy is psychic because she predicted this relationship, um, again, they're in agreement. Even when he's like, well, you're very kissy today. Oh, is that a problem? <laughs> Give me yeah. more kisses. <laughs> that, that's that's those crystal girls i was telling you about on right. the other episode she deep in the crystal she is seeing that her white knight is going to be coming yeah. to her <laughs> potentially on a netflix show and through a wall she's going to find her person that's exactly what she envisioned get out mm -hmm. of here <laughs> <laughs> it is what she envisioned leave her alone leave her alone <laughs> <laughs> we get back to chelsea and jimmy right um, they go to Carowinds and they ride the Fury 325 roller coaster. Um, I'm assuming it's a really intense one. I remember, uh, so I went by the rodeo here in Houston and seeing people on those carnival rides. I'm like, yeah, definitely never getting on that one. Um, but they look like they were having fun. And this this was a gr this version of them seems really happy, even when they get to dinner and the conversation gets a little serious. But isn't that sad about their whole storyline? Like we're all waiting, like, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. They're eating a bag of chips. Okay, it's going great. What's about to go wrong? What's Chelsea going to say? <laughs> it's like we're waiting for something negative. Like, why can't they just have a good date? And it was. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a good date. This was the place he went in his childhood. They got a chance to ride roller coasters together. Reserve the whole park just for them. You got to feel special when you have the whole park and staff <laughs> to yourself. It's funny you should say that because Jay Noel says, Netflix charging us these fees so these two goofs can get a whole theme park. <laughs> And like literally, as you said, it didn't type to <laughs> Absolutely right. We didn't want to pay for this damn ride. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and even when they get to dinner, I mean, all that seems like it's, it's going well. You know, Jimmy asks how she's feeling and she says some days have been hard and she keeps asking herself if she can see her life with Jimmy. And today feels really, really good i was expecting her to say a thousand percent yeah but she did today so. feels really really good and then jimmy of course says he has no doubt in his mind that she is his person mm -hmm. he does say that and then 
he starts to ask her about where she's at with her decision and then cliffhanger. Now, we know she's probably going to come back and be like, oh my God, of course, you know, but they give us this cliffhanger. And right. now we're stuck waiting until the weddings to see what happens. So this is what we'll see next. And, and not decision day, but wedding days and see them all getting there and they have to go back and really... This, this is the one that we get one episode and we're gonna, it's gonna drag through. I'll be honest, I'm not looking forward to the whole lead up to the getting dressed. It's, it's, let's get to the decisions. I wanna know what happens um, and we'll get to our predictions in a second. Here's one question though. Okay, Wu says, the part being empty was weird. Would that feel weird to you too? Cause it, it would feel kind of weird to me. I, I know why, but it would feel weird. I don't, people see that as romantic. I don't think so. I think it's weird as hell. It would be weird if I didn't plan it and just walked into an amusement park <laughs> and it's just me and my girl and that's it and just a bunch of staff waiting on us like this. That would be weird. But the fact that we know we rented the whole thing out and it's just us, normal. It would be a big deal. Yeah, you walk in like, what you just the walk in, the all the workers just looking at you. Like, <laughs> that would be weird if there was no one else, no cameras, just empty park. With employees. M, M. Smith says, I love it. No lines. All right, Michelle, I'm with you, though. I would need people on the ride with me. Yeah, I need to know if I'm going to die, it's not going to be me alone. Yeah, I, I would love it because I'd want to ride the roller coasters as many times as I possibly could. I can just mm -hmm. be like, hey, one more time and just keep doing it over and over where you can't do that when it's packed. Mm -hmm. You know, don't have to wait for food and snacks, <laughs> you know, because no one else is there. Perfect. M. Smith says, horror movie weird if you didn't plan it. <laughs> yeah. You didn't plan it, yeah. Someone's about to die in this movie. <laughs> well, speaking of movies, Nicole says it was the start of a Final Destination movie. The one I always remember is, I think it's the first Final Destination. It's on the interstate whenever I see a truck carrying logs, like tree trunks. I'm just like, let me get from behind this thing right now. I do that too. <laughs> or, or when I see those uh, trucks that are carrying vehicles. Yeah, and they're stacked up. Oh yeah, I move. A, I, don't, oh, yeah. I don't like to be around. I, I got to go around because I'm like this quick. thing falls. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Let's get to some predictions, man. Um, even though uh, Lucy B has a great one, how many times will Chelsea say she has to puke before she walks down the aisle? Prediction. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll probably hear at least two more times. At least, I agree. at least two more times. <laughs> I absolutely agree. All right, so let's start with since we're here, let's let's start with Chelsea and Jimmy. Um, are they saying yes at the altar? My prediction is Jimmy's gonna say yes, Chelsea's gonna say no. There I said it. Jimmy's gonna say yes, and you say Chelsea no. Yes. Reason why I only only reason why I think that is Jimmy keeps saying this, you're my person. You're, and a lot of people thought that he was trying to talk himself into this. Mm -hmm. I felt that he said too much to all of a sudden back out on the day of the wedding, unless mm -hmm. Chelsea says something, going back to that cliffhanger, unless something transpires from that mm -hmm. could lead him to say no. But if I go off what I've seen so far, Jimmy would say yes. Wow. But then Chelsea is going to say no. That's interesting because, okay, I have them both saying yes. I think Chelsea's going to say yes as well. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with both of them saying yes. Um, uh, Lucy B says, I agree. Chelsea says no. Um, Thank you, Lucy B. <laughs> <laughs> she says, Jimmy, yes. Looney Tunes, no. <laughs> but eat, but eat, but eat, but eat. That's all, folks. <laughs> Mrs. Moore say he better say hell no. <laughs> I think he's going to say yes. She already met Ma and Paul. Yeah. So uh, I, I can't uh, say uh, no. Once you meet Ma and Paul, yeah. you are part of my family. <laughs> he, is, he is a commitment person. He's like, I, I don't date just, he's not a casual dater. He dates with in, intent and purpose. And Bodine says, Jimmy says, no, you cray. No, I think he actually likes her crazy. Um, and Zero Brie Roll says, Jimmy, yes. Chelsea, I'm comfy. I'm comfy. <laughs> I, we're going to say these two just because they're, we have to go through. Um, Brittany and Kenneth. <laughs> <laughs> Hail to the no, to the no, no, no. Along no. with Laura and Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no just, to both. I just figured we, we, we got at least, we got at least pit, go through all of these, right? We got to at least go through all of these. Um, oh, by the way. Oh, this was interesting. I just saw this real quick. Uh, 
Ao says Chelsea is Zenob for sure. Jimmy should say no. I hope he says no. Um, Shoshana uh, says Kenneth will text now. I don't think, that's, I think that's now. A reach. I don't think <laughs> I don't think Chelsea and Zenob are the same. I don't think so either. Yeah, I don't know if I put them as the same, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Zenob was a little was, was she was a, she was a little different though. Um, uh, let's see here, Amy and Johnny. What do you say about them? Both will say yes. I'm in agreement too. I think I think they say yes. It's too easy. These two are. If they say no, that would be the biggest shock of the season. Right. Yeah. I think that would that would have been the biggest one. All right. What about these two? Black love. Black black love. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with my gut. Mm-hmm. I think AD is going to say yes. Mm -hmm. Clay's going to say no. <sighs> you know, it's funny because I think I was literally about to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's interesting because I can see them both say, I can see it that way, but I can see it the other way too. Um, high vibe agrees. Clay, no. AD, yes. Um, Amanda says Clay's going to say no. Um, Zero Brero goes the other way, says Clay says yes, and AD says no. Um, <laughs> Amanda says AD gonna be a fiance for 84 years because that's the curse of Sarah Ann saying stay out my damn business. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle says Black Love Clay will say no. I, you know what? And I see, I see a lot of this. Clay say no, AD yes. Mm. Oh, how about this one? Ruby Ray says, uh, imagine Clay's dad shows up at the altar. Awkward. And does what? AD. Interjects, I love AD. Yeah. <laughs> AD, you gonna tell them about us? <laughs> <laughs> AD, get with me. I've got all my cheating out of my system already. <laughs> my son is still young. You don't want to go through what I put his his mom through. <laughs> Come on, the big man, let me take care of you. <laughs> Lucy B says AD will surprisingly say no. I could that, that's the thing. I can see her saying no too. But I'm going to go with yes. My prediction, I'm not changing my prediction. I just want to say this. I'm not going to change my prediction. I still think she says yes, just like you, and Clay says no, right? Because right. Clay doesn't want to be locked down the way you could tell when, no, I just want to be, not be bothered. I want to stay away from you for a couple of days. Because I hear what you hear you seven days a week. <laughs> eee, Clay's home. <laughs> Every day you come over, her, eee, hey, baby. I love you so much. <laughs> beamed at me, beamed at me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> beamed at me, Daddy. That's gonna be their kink. Yeah, beamed at me. <laughs> uh, look, Sarah S says Clay's already trying to say no. He wanted to date after the wedding. That, that, when they start having that conversation, that is a clear sign. This they don't see wife, right? I, I don't think it has to do with AD. I just think it's Clay. He's really not ready to mm. be married because if, all, if you are in the, going through a process and experiment with the hope to find somebody that you're going to marry in four weeks, but all you could think about is every black man that you know who cheats mm -hmm. and then, oh, Puffy and Will Smith, because they're on his level, they cheated too. And then his dad, he's just focused on cheating. I just don't think he's ready. Um. Zero Brero says uh, Clay's dad is going to hit on AD's mom. If he shows up, I predict that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yes. <laughs> and J Noel says, look, AD doesn't want to watch that soup eaten for the rest of her life. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Look, bad table man is something I couldn't deal with. I, I, I remember just somebody was who who would chew their mouth open. I'm like, yeah, nope. That's why you take that's why you take people out to eat. <laughs> so you can see, get wings tells you a whole lot. <laughs> well, you know what? What can I say about that? <laughs> you know how I eat wings, <laughs> right? Look, oh, here's one. Uh, K Wu had a great point. He's already gone. They didn't even show up at the cookout together. Yeah, we. Here's the crazy thing. We didn't even miss. Clay at the cookout until he showed up. We're like, oh, that's right. He well, wasn't she, there. Someone asked where he was, and she said that he had a uh, work thing and was coming right after. So mm -hmm. I don't see that being that crazy. Right. 
Yeah, that's true. Um, ha- Happy Gardener says Clay's parents will reunite. Hashtag plot twist. Hope not. <laughs> All right, we got one more prediction. Right, Sarah Ann and Jeremy. They may not be at the altar, but you know they'll be at the reunion. Um, they'll, they'll be done by the reunion. You think they'll be done by the reunion? Yeah, I think oh. they'll be done by the reunion. Whatever happened between them, that'll fizzle out by the reunion. <laughs> Look, they're getting, they're getting dual. <laughs> he does look happier with... Look at this. Does he look happier? It's the same picture, right? But does he look happier with Sarah Ann or Laura? Yeah, camera, <laughs> camera one, camera two. Camera one. Camera one. You know, camera when you two. go get your eyes checked, this one or this one? Which one looks better? This one or this one? Is it this one? Yeah. Or this one? <laughs> yeah. I think I think their fling will be over by the time they get to the reunion, but I don't see them like getting married. <laughs> oh, it says these clowns. They should say, stop. <laughs> Uh, hey, look, we'll see what this what happens on this next one. So um, this should be an interesting one. Now, here's the question. We get it Wednesday. Obviously. Do we want to do Wednesday or are we going to do Thursday? I know we didn't talk about this before. So you're going to put me on the spot now? Jet so skis. what we'll do is we'll make sure everybody hits the like button. Jet, jet skis. <laughs> make sure you <laughs> make sure you're subscribed 1000 <laughs> percent And hit the bell for notifications. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll know. Because we'll definitely look, we'll and we'll probably do let's do thir- Thursday, Friday, um, probably Thursday, Friday, Saturday, do our uh, but we have a couple things to do. We've got this one episode to do um this week. Episode 12. Mm-hmm. Then we've got Married at First Sight and Ready to Love. So, yeah. But yeah, do us a favor. Like Michelle says, please hit the like button. Okay? Yep. Hit the bell for notifications. Hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed. We appreciate you. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. As always, you make this fun for us to do. And jet skis. Jet skis. <laughs> jet skis is the new safe word for all the randoms. <laughs> Like Trisha says, jet skis fixes all problems. <laughs> <laughs> and Mrs. Smith already has like, hey, hey, Thursday, married at first sight is on Wednesday. Yeah, you're right. Let's let, we'll be respectful to married at first sight since we have to do it still too. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm Yanni Rude, and I'm Just Terrell. Make sure you follow us at Yanni Rude at Just Terrell and at RGRT Pod. Yeah, send us some of your random thoughts or some of the bullshit on the internet. We'll talk about it on the regular show. It's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Cheers. Cheers. Jet skis. <laughs>